In Southern Africa, as conservation experts, we must build balanced ecosystems in our landscapes in Kavango. And we'll be teaching you how to play Kavango, game by Matt Brown and Zara Reid, and published by Masasa Games. And hello everyone, it's Tarrant. And Stella here from Midland University. Okay, let's go to the classroom. In Kavango, players are conservationalists who are trying to maintain the ecosystem in the five-country Kavango Zambezi Transfrontier Conservation Area. Over three rounds of card drafting, players will attempt to build up healthy food chains and ecosystems, with basic producers supporting small animals, supporting large animals, as well as earning funds which they can invest in the protection of habitats from poaching and climate. Players score points for their animals, points for objectives, and points for awards, and whoever scores the most points will be the winner. To set up, give each player a landscape board. You can use the slip inside or the placement side, a protection board, and all of your coloured pieces. Keep completion tokens and high scoring markers near your board. Pick your favourite score marker to place at zero on the score track. And add your money cubes to a section of the bank tray. Prepare the decks of cards in their trays. You'll have shuffled face down decks of action cards, level A, B and C species cards, goal cards and round 1, 2 and 3 research cards. There's also a deck of rewilding cards, all of which are identical. Shuffle and deal each player one conservation expert card. This provides you with a unique player power. Deal each player a goal card. This will have an end of game scoring objective which you'll try to meet through the game. Take a number of your coloured money cubes depending on the level of difficulty you wish to play. Three cubes for the beginner mode, two for intermediate and one for expert. You may choose to vary this between players as a handicap if you wish. Lay out twice as many cards from the C deck as there are players and choose a first player. Give each player the numbered hand markers clockwise. In turn order, each player picks one of the available cards and then in reverse order, starting from the last player to pick, each player picks another card. Add those cards to your sanctuary. Those are the three spaces on the right hand side of your board. You're now ready to play. Kavango is played in three rounds. To set up for a round, first deal out four research cards from the current round numbers deck. These are different objectives which players can try to meet during the current round in order to gain money cubes and points. Then, depending on your round and your player count, deal each player a hand of cards as indicated on the tray. So in a three player game for round one, each player would get two action cards, five A cards and five B cards. Your hand size will be 15 in a one or two player game and 12 in a three to five player game. To your hand, add the numbered hand marker that you received in setup. The round then takes place over 10 turns. Each turn is broken into four phases. First, choose a card. Each player looks at their hand and simultaneously chooses one card. Second is play a card. All players simultaneously reveal the cards they've played and then play them according to the type of card it is. Third is to complete research and invest money. Here players can use any money cubes they have to make investments or to complete any research cards they qualify for. And lastly is pass cards in which all players hand their leftover cards to the player on their left and receive a hand from the player on their right. After 10 turns you'll have either 2 or 5 cards remaining in hand depending on your player count. Those cards will be discarded and you'll move on to the next round. So now let's look at each phase in detail. The first step of a turn is choose. Simultaneously, all players look at the cards that they've received in hand and choose any one that they wish to play, playing it face down and keeping the rest of the hand separate. You may choose any card without restriction, even if you can't play it in the next step. 
The second step is play the card, during which all players will reveal their chosen cards and play them. Before anything else happens, all players who chose action cards will play them first. And if multiple players chose action cards, resolve them in order from whoever has the lowest hand marker up to highest. To play an action card, reveal it, resolve its effect, here for example it's gaining two of your money cubes from the general bank, and then discard the card. There will be a single common discard pile for cards of all types. Once the actions are done, all players who have species cards reveal and play them simultaneously. All of the A cards in the game are called producers, and they can all be legally played. Simply slot the card into the appropriate column at the top left of your player board. Producers are the basic foods in your ecosystem, and you'll need them to support both the small and large species, which you'll be attracting to your reserve. Note that each player does start with two producers, which are shown more brightly coloured than the other. As it stands, I have one grass, three trees, no invertebrates, and two fish. When you play a species card, either from the B or C deck, then what you'll be trying to do is add that card to a space in your reserve. To be allowed to do this, you must meet its food requirement, shown in the bottom left of the card, and if applicable, its protection requirements shown in the left middle. Here to play this tree squirrel, the food requirements are two trees. I have three, so I meet it, and there are no protection requirements. That means I can legally play this, adding it into a slot. It doesn't matter which slot you choose, they're all equivalent. If you don't meet the requirements when you play the card, then you can't add it to your reserve. For this gecko, I don't have the food requirements, so I can't add it. And for this Hyrax, I meet the food, but I don't meet the protection, so I can't yet add it to my reserve. I'll talk more about protections a little bit later when we get to the investment action. If when you play a species card, you don't yet meet the requirements to add it to your reserve, then you may instead add it to a vacant slot in your sanctuary. Your sanctuary serves as a temporary storage area, and at any future time when you meet the requirements for a species in your sanctuary, you may immediately, and in the same phase that you met the requirements, move that species into your reserve. A couple more notes on requirements. In almost all cases, B deck species require combinations of icons which are found on producers. It is the combination of these four basic icons. Species from the C deck, on the other hand, may require icons from producers, or possibly from other species. Here, in addition to the protection, the civet would need a tree and invertebrate a fish, and a reptile, which comes from your previously played species. The most valuable cards often require many species icons. Secondly, among the producers, the invertebrates are special because in addition to the standard purple invertebrate icon, there are two related sub-icons, the termites and the bees. Each of these counts as an invertebrate in its own right, but there are some species which require one of the two specific icons. For example, these two icons meet the food requirements of the red toad, but not for the aardvark. Finally, regardless of the card type you chose, you may always choose to discard the card instead of playing it to gain one money cube. You may also discard a card from a sanctuary slot at any time to gain that same reward. After the play card step is complete, each player has the chance to complete research and make investments. You may complete research if you meet the objective on one or more of the research cards for the round. Each card has three steps on it, an easy, medium and hard level with a low, medium and high reward. You may only complete each research card once, and so it's up to you to decide whether you wait for the higher reward or cash in early. If you choose to complete research, then determine which one you qualify for, here it's number of trees, I have three, so I would qualify for the middle reward. Mark it with a completion token so that you know not to complete that research again. 
and gained a depicted money and points. So here, two money and two points. You may complete multiple research on the same turn if you qualify. Research cards are non-competitive, so multiple players can complete the same research card within the same round, even completing the same level as a previous player. The other thing you can do in this step is invest. This lets you make any number of purchases with your money cubes. There are four types of purchase. You can complete the next level of your habitat protection. Or you can complete the next level of your poaching protection. You must complete an entire step at once, so my next cost would be two. Now from future turns, you'll be allowed to play animals with higher protection levels into your reserve, or can move them across immediately if they're in your sanctuary. You can invest in climate protection. This is similar but different, because all players are contributing to the same level of protection. Put any number of cubes in, from left to right up to the column representing your player count. As soon as a section has been filled, all players in the game will now be able to play cards that have that level of climate protection required. In this way, climate is a collaborative effort, however, at the end of the game, you will get some reward for the amount of contribution you've made, which we'll later see in final scoring. The final option is to spend four cubes to buy a rewilding card. Immediately add this card to one of your four producer columns to serve as any basic producer icon. This is an expensive way to get these basic icons, however if you miss out on the necessary A cards, it's the only way to get them. Be clear that the sequence of a turn is fixed. First you choose a card, then you play it, and only then can you make investments. If I'd chosen this card and had four money available, I would have to wait until after I'd played or discarded this before I could buy the rewilding card that would pay for its cost. Once all players have finished with research and investments, players hand the remaining cards in their hand to the player on their left, and receive cards from the player on their right to begin the next turn. Hand number markers are also passed around as part of this process. Once the round is over, leftover cards are discarded, players retrieve their completion tokens, and all of the research from that round is removed. Now proceed to the next round setup with the next level research cards and the next composition of hand. The C deck enters play from round two. And when you reach round three, not only do you stop drawing A and B cards, but all remaining A and B cards are removed and added to the discard pile. This means there'll no longer be any producer icons in hands, and so if you need them, you'll either need to get them through rewilding or through action cards which let you mine the discard pile. After the third round, the game is over and you'll proceed to final scoring. For all the animals you've added to your reserve, not the sanctuary, score the points printed in the top left corners. Check the requirements on your hidden goal card and score points accordingly. Score any of the three conservation awards you qualify for. Each of these scores 10 points. You get 10 points if you've filled up both your habitat and poaching protection. You get 10 points if you have all 11 species types in your reserve. This means all four production types, and the bees and termites do count as invertebrates, as well as the seven different animal types. And you gain 10 points if you've contributed at least eight cubes to climate research. The player with the highest score wins, and if tied, victory is shared. And that's how to play Kavango. Thanks so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and let me know and share this video if you enjoyed it. And hopefully you have a great day. See you next time.